Okay, let's talk about how to simplify square roots. And you can see here I have an example of what I'm going to be talking about. I have the square root of 12, but a more simpler way we can write this square root of 12 is actually 2 times the square root of 3. So how do I go from here to here? Well, this is precisely what I'm going to be talking about in this video. Now, this word in mathematics, simplify, you'll see this pretty uh, often. Uh, but it basically means what it says. It means to write something in, in a more simpler manner. It's no different than, let's say, you had the fraction 10 over 30. We don't want to write our fraction uh, 10 over 30 like this. We want to write it in a simpler way, i.e. 1 third. Okay, so you always want to reduce or simplify um, various numbers, and square roots are no different. Matter of fact, uh, most algebra teachers, if you just gave your final answer as a square root of 12, they would deduct uh, points, but more importantly, than not writing your answer, your square root in its most simpler uh, form, is that you cannot do like addition and subtraction of square root problems without first simplifying. So you definitely gotta know how to do this, and it's not that difficult. But um, for those of you out there that think you know how to do this, gonna put your um, answers in the comment section. Say, yes, I understand where this is going, but stick around for a couple minutes, you're gonna see uh, exactly how this works. It's not that difficult. But uh, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I'm going to leave a link to my math help program in the description of this video. But I've been teaching math for decades and really I've um, tried to refine a teaching style where I you know, really explain things in a super clear and understandable way in language that most students uh, like and understand. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or even college level in terms of mathematics, I can definitely help you out. Now, if you happen to be preparing for any sort of test that has a math section on it, I'm talking about things like the GED, SAT, ACT, maybe even like a teacher certification exam, I can help you prepare and pass those exams. If you homeschool, definitely got to check out my middle and high school math courses. I was recently voted number one in those categories by a major homeschool publication. And if you need some math notes, I'm going to leave uh, links to my math notes in the description of this video. All right, so let's get into this and learn how to simplify square roots. And we'll go ahead and start with this first problem. And I'm going to show you exactly uh, how we went from the square root of 12 to uh, 2 times the square root of 3. So what you need to first understand is that when we have a square root of a number, this number that's underneath the square root, we can break this up in its factors. So in other words, we can think of 12 as 6 times 2 or maybe 4 times 3. I'm going to keep uh, the factors 4 times 3 because this is going to have a specific... Uh, reason why I'm selecting the factor of 4. So let's break up the square root of 12. Let's think of the square root of 12 as the square root of 4 times the square root of 3. Now here's the secret uh, to being able to simplify a square root. So notice this is one big square root of uh, 4 times 3, but we can actually pull apart that one big square root into two separate square roots. So you need to understand that the square root of 4 times 3 is equal to the square root of 4 times the square root of 3. You're allowed to do this. Matter of fact, this is how you multiply or how you can multiply square roots is we just simply multiply the factors and put it underneath one big square root. So this is equivalent to this and this is equivalent to this. But notice that I can pull apart this one big square root into two separate square roots, i.e. the square roots of the respective factors. And when, I'm able, when I do that, I'm able to take the square root of this factor, the square root of 4, and uh, we're going to be dealing with the, what we call uh, the principal square root. So the square root of 4, just go ahead and use 2, which is just a positive version. You don't need to do the plus or minus uh, for that, so just keep it as the principal square root. So the square root of 4 is 2. Okay, so it's going to be 2 times this square root of 3. That's why the square root of 12 is equal to 2 square root of 3, and that is it. That's just how you simplify. So the real secret here is to find factors like 4, where we could take the square root of a nice um, number that you know the square root of, like the square root of 4 is, is of course, 2, the principal square root. So if you understand this, let's go ahead and take a look at the factors that we want to try to um, find uh, in terms of uh, these uh, numbers underneath these square roots. So we're talking about uh, numbers, what we call perfect square. So 4 is a perfect square, and 4 is a perfect square because when we take the square root of 4, it is 2. 
okay? And then, of course, all these other numbers you should recognize. The square root of 9 is 3, square root of 16 is 4, square root of 25 is 5, etc. So these are, are examples of numbers that are called perfect squares. So you want to be looking for these in terms of um, the factors of, of your respective number that you're trying to simplify. So when we're trying to simplify a square root, like so, you want to look at the factors, okay? You're like, all right, can I break this up into some number times another number such that one of these numbers is a perfect square? Okay, so let's take a look at another example. And uh, we'll use the square root of 80, and then we'll go ahead and call it a wrap for this particular video. So when we look at the square root of 80, we're like, well, um, how do we you know, approach this? Because there's all sorts of different factors I can write um, 80 as. So 80 is the same thing as 8 times 10. Uh, so this is fine. The square root of 80 is equal to 8 times 10, or square root of 8 times 10. But when I'm looking at these numbers, are um, is 8 or 10 a perfect squ um, square? Can I take the square root of each of these numbers? No. So that's maybe not the best way to approach this problem. But uh, let's take a look at this. We have the square root of 4 times 20. Okay, and of course that is 80 as well. So this is pretty good right here because when I take the square root of 4, that would be 2. But if you notice, 20 is actually 4 times 5. Okay, so we would actually have to do this again. We would end up with 2 times the square root of 20, and then I would have to continue to take out more perfect squares. So you're not fully simplified um, with uh, simplifying a square root until you've taken out all the perfect squares. So you could start the problem this way. Um, think of uh, square root of 80 as uh, 4 times 20, and that's fine, but you're just going to have to do more work. But for those of you out there that are thinking, hmm, or maybe kind of remember that 16 times 5 is in fact 80, well, guess what? This is the biggest perfect square, and that's what you want to be looking for, okay? Now, if you can't find the big the biggest, excuse me, the biggest perfect square, it's no problem. You can kind of work it down this way as long as you're looking to uh, extract all these perfect squares out of the problems. But let's go ahead and wrap up this problem this way. So 16 times 5 uh, is, uh, of course, 80. And then I could separate this one big square root as a square root of 16 times the square root of 5. And, of course, the square root of 16 is 4. Okay, so that's 4 times the square root of 5. There you go. This is uh, the square root of 80 simplified. So 4 times the square root of 5. And if you um, kind of started the problem using these two factors, you would have eventually gotten to this point. But the whole idea is you, you can't have any more perfect squared factors underneath that square root. But this is the answer. Okay, so if you knew all this, you're like, yeah, I already knew all this. I don't even know why I watched this video. But listen, if you knew all this and got all this right, then I must go ahead and give you a little bit of props and give you a nice little happy face with the good old 1985 flat top haircut. That was a pretty cool haircut. We don't see those around anymore. No matter of fact, let me throw in an A plus anyway, 100% for this little pop quiz. So that's pretty impressive, just like this haircut was back in the good old days. But um, here's the deal. If you understand this, that's fine. Okay, but if you don't practice this, you're going to get rusty with these math skills. Now, if this is the first time you're learning this, and you're like, oh, no, I get this. Now, well, you're in the same boat. You have to practice this. Do not confuse um, you watching me doing math as you building your own math skills. So follow through and practice. So let me uh, leave you a couple suggestions. One, I do have additional videos on my YouTube channel about uh, square roots. So you can practice that way. Of course, um, uh, you're probably in some sort of math class, so you're probably doing your homework. But if you really, really need to learn this stuff, I would suggest one of my algebra courses uh, because that's where you're really going to uh, get my best uh, instruction on this. And, you know, I do a ton of practice problems um, when it comes to radicals and square roots. So anyways, uh, the whole idea behind this video is to just give you a quick power lesson and review on how to simplify a square root. And if this was helpful in some small way, please consider smashing that like button. That definitely helps me out. And maybe even uh, subscribing to my YouTube channel. Again, I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years, have over a thousand plus math videos, basic math to advanced math like calculus and everything in between. So please take advantage of all the videos that I've posted and will post. But my best math help will always be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.